expenses. Well, clearly, yeah, he can't work. He's not going to school anymore. Uh, he's in hiding. I, I'm not surprised by that at all. Are you? No, I guess not. Um, I mean, George Zimmerman, his life has totally changed over the last two weeks. I mean, you know, regardless of his guilt or innocence, I would imagine he's out there looking for some aid as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They keep in mind also the Trayvon Martin's family also. They, they've been raising funds as well for legal defense because they have lawyers as well uh, in this case. So it's, this, this is not shocking. It happens in many other cases. We see it all the time. So he, on his website, he has uh, written this. Uh, on Sunday, February 26th, I was involved in a life-altering event. Um, which led me to become the subject of intense media coverage uh, coverage as a result of the incident and subsequent media coverage I've been forced to leave my home my school my employer my family and ultimately my entire life he goes on to say that the website's sole purpose is to solicit donations to help fund his defense if in fact that is needed it comes out the same day that the Florida special prosecutor Angela Corey said she's not going to convene a grand jury in the case let's get right to Mark Needjam uh, he's a CNN contributor he's also a criminal defense attorney Nice to see you, sir. Thanks for talking with us. It doesn't strike any of us around this table that this is a, a, a unusual or surprising thing to do. Is this unusual for someone who's not been charged with a crime to start uh, thinking about raising funds for a potential defense? No, he needs an attorney now and he's doing the right thing. These type of cases, I've handled many national cases and they're all consuming. Uh, his lawyers are going to be working from morning, noon and night and uh, they need to make a living and the reality of it is, is for those who might suggest well let him go get a job he can't get a job his life is truly in danger right now there's been a rush to judgment by many and um, uh, suggestions that uh, he has done it without uh, really all the facts coming in so i think that there's really very little, there's very few alternatives right now other than to raise money it's a, having lawyers is an expensive proposition and he needs them as early as possible well there's no debate over whether or not he shot and killed trayvon martin i mean that's the, a fact of the case interestingly on his website he he wrote as i was just reading a moment ago i was involved in a life-altering event and then said and calls it an incident as well does that surprise you no i mean that sounds like his lawyers helped ward it that he can't make any admissions or confessions and it's best that he not. I mean, there's no reason to expand beyond that. We all know that, in fact, he was the, the, the shooter. The issue is, uh, legally, whether it was justified or not under Florida's law. So, no, I think that they guarded their words appropriately. And, uh, and I, I'm impressed with the fact that he was honest about it. He said he was using it for living expenses and just not legal expenses. Um, he's sa simply saying he can't work. And so I think that it was a, a full disclosure of what the funds were intended for, which is appropriate. Uh, as a defense attorney, would you ever, ever advise a client, let's say it does move forward uh, and he starts using the website as more than just a, a place to, to get funds, but also to have a conversation, which people often do on their own websites. You know, here's my position, here's what I'm doing, here's how I can talk to my people. I, I have to imagine as a defense attorney, you would think that would potentially be a disaster. Of course. So anytime you talk, those comments are going to be used against you. I mean, there are cases when you're going to want a client to talk. This is not one of them. <laughs> Um, uh, this is a case where we need to wait for all the evidence to come out so we can better and fully assess what, to, what in fact happened and whether the acts fit into Florida's law or not. And then I think there's going to be a substantial debate, even far beyond what we're going through now, about is Florida's law uh, proper and um, the, the whole issue about people's rights to arm themselves and where they should arm themselves and when they can use those uh, weapons. So uh, the, the, this is going to not only deal with this specific issue, but I think the debate's going to be far, far greater. Yeah, clearly, I would agree with you that stand your ground is going to, you know, be closely examined. Angela Corey decided, as you well know, not to take the case to the grand jury, and many people, depend, regardless of how uh, their perspective on the case, have called her courageous for not doing that. Explain that to me. Why is that courageous? Well, typically, when you have a controversial case, a high publicity case, it's very easy for the prosecutor to hide behind the grand jury and simply take political shelter from the, from the de uh, decision of the grand jury. What she has done, and what she's always done, apparently, she goes, I don't go to the grand jury. I fully investigate my case, and then I make a decision about which charges, if any, to bring against the accused. And apparently she's staying consistent with this, as she has in all of her previous cases. She announced early on that she does not typically go to the grand jury, in fact, never goes to the grand jury. And I think this is consistent. It'd be very easy in a case like this to say, ah, oh, the people have spoken with the grand jury. She's choosing not to do that. Um, the fact of the matter, though, is, is that 
Um, she's got some very serious decisions to make, and I think she's going to go ahead and really do an exhaustive examination, far more than a an uh, far more investigation than a grand jury would be able to do, sitting um, and then listening to the evidence come in. Hi, Mark. Will Kane. Does the fact that uh, Angela Corey has decided not to go to a grand jury indicate to you, one way or another, whether or not she she intends to bring charges at all? I don't think it indicates anything. I think that it's, it's getting her the uh, requisite time that she thinks she needs to go ahead and conduct a full and complete investigation. There needs to be tape enhancements. There's questions about when the plea for uh, please help me is on the tape. There's still a debate as to who in fact was saying that. There's witnesses apparently um, in some form or another who are out there. There is uh, some enhancement that needed to be done and has been done on the videotape when he was being processed or walked through um, the Sally Port at the jail. So there's a lot of things that need to be um, taken into consideration, and then those facts need to be plugged into Florida's law. Hmm. And so th there's a lot here. And then she has to determine, do the actions, can they prove a case in, in good faith, they have ethical obligations, can they move forward in good faith? So there's a lot going on here. Hey Mark, also the grand jury date was set by the previous DA. She didn't actually set this, and so uh, she really wasn't obligated to take it to the grand jury. Exactly. I mean, it could have been uh, canceled anyway, but that's exactly right. Um, uh, Norm Wolfinger, the state attorney for that circuit, um, initially had it set through his uh, assistant state attorneys. When she assumed the case, uh, it was her case. It's, it, this is her ball game. She'll make the decisions that she deems appropriate. And I think we have to take her out of the word. She's a very tough prosecutor, without question. But this is consistent with what she's always done. She's going to go ahead and uh, take the hits and take the responsibility for whatever the decision is, and she's moving forward appropriately. With no grand jury, that means no first-degree murder. That's now off the table. Does that surprise you? No, there's no first-degree murder here. That would require premeditation. I think that if we see charges come down, there'll be a manslaughter in one form or another, whether in, and whether there'll be an aggravator because of the age of Trayvon. I think... Um, if we see a, a charge come down, it will be uh, in the manslaughter category. Mark Which is still very serious in Florida because you have a firearm used in the commission of a death. So, um, you know, we have very serious gun laws, especially if a death uh, ensues. Mark Nijame joining us this morning, CNN contributor and defense attorney, criminal defense attorney. Nice to see you. Thanks.